Hey up and welcome to another episode of Last Cast. Today you join us at one of my old haunts. It's a, a really interesting venue, this, so we'll run you through that in a second, but we're up here at Willow Hall Dam, just outside Sorby Bridge. It's a local water to me and somewhere that I've fished on and off for about 10 years or so. Um, the venue itself is an incredibly tricky venue. It's something that pretty much most of the, the guys viewing, they probably won't have seen any, any place like this. It's about 30 foot deep in the middle. Pretty much it's cut like a V into the, uh, into the, the lake bed. Um, and the water's absolutely gin clear. The target fish today, pretty much, right, it's, it's a host of silver fish in here. It's not the easiest venue, so there's a lot of little tips and tricks that we'll have to run through today to sort of explain it. So it might turn into quite a long video, this, but hopefully there'll be quite a few interesting points in terms of how we're fishing these sort of pegs. Um, like I say, you can see the peg behind me. Picked a nice peg in the shade here on the, the near side bank. Um, and like I say, they're all pretty much of a muchness on these, this lake. The pegs are all really deep. They shelve off at probably a one in three gradient at the, at the shallowest. And at some points it's like a, a one in two or less kind of gradient. So you're always fishing on a steep slope. The bottom here is pretty much uh, rock and gravel. So again, it's, it's something very different. There's no sort of silt beds or anything of any significance to fish on. And if you were to get into the middle where the old stream cut in, you're talking probably about a top seven of depth. So it's far too deep to fish in really. Um, and especially with the, the time of year, with it being a bit warmer, the fish will tend to come up the shelf a bit. So in terms of how we're gonna tackle the peg today from like an overview point of view, we're looking at pole fishing. As you can see, there's overhanging trees behind us, or in front of us, I should say, when we're fishing, um, which means that running line's sort of out of the question. So a lot of the fishing today is going to be fishing short on the pole, on the shelf, but again, we'll go through the rigs and you'll see how deep it is. And then we're also going to put in a shallow line at about sort of 10 and a half to 11 and a half metres. Again, we've got uh, cover from the trees here, so hopefully that'll give the fish confidence to come up and feed. The main sort of target species that we're after today are roach and perch. Um, there's odd eyed in here, a few barbel as well even. So we might hook one or two of them if we're lucky, even an odd chub. There's a few bream as well, but again, I've not caught one of them in about 10, 12 years on here. They tend to just sit out in the middle of the lake and they're very hard to, to fish for. Um, so that'll take us onto the rigs and how we're going to tackle it today. So in terms of what we've got set up, I've got four rigs on top fours and two shallow rigs. So my top four rigs, we're going to be fishing down to us right a little bit. And as you can see, the peg's on a bit of an angle here. So what I'm wanting to do, rather than fishing in front of me and shipping out to go down the shelf, I'm wanting to fish on an angle so I can fish basically left to right and drag the rig up the shelf and present it into the, the shelf that way. It makes presenting the rig much easier. Rather than swinging the bulk out and letting it swing into the shelf, I can basically drag it up the shelf and that'll dictate how much over depth I'm fishing. So I've plumbed up and got a, a good patch where I know that it's, it's fairly, fairly steady gradient to fish on. But if I want to go further over depth, what I'll do is I'll just drag that float up the shelf a bit and by moving it, say, three, four inches to the right, I'll probably come up about an inch in depth or so. So the rigs that I've got set up, I've got one that's sort of through the water and then three that are, are fishing to the deck. So as you can see, they're on top fours. And this is one that I've got set about six inch off bottom. This is if it's a bit tricky and the roach and the perch start coming off bottom and if I want to lose feed on that line, but I don't really intend to. So at the top end of the rigs, I've got a number six elastic, so fairly stout for, for striking through the depth of water, but again, not too heavy to bump fish like quality roach. I've got a really old MAP M3 float there, which is a, a 0.5 gram, lovely fibre bristle on it, tapered body. It's an absolutely fantastic rig that I use on a lot of waters where I'm fishing sort of delicately through the water. Again, you'll note I've got a short lash. That's really important on these sort of, on this kind of, uh, in this situation really because i'm fishing in quite a tight area and i want to really control where i'm fishing on the shelf i want to fish a short line so even on that short line i've also got back shot as well so again i'm, I'm really controlling the rig as much as i can running down the rig it's taken quite a while to shot this one I've, I've made it up but you can see it's a very gradual taper there with number 10s there's probably about 15 or so down the line there and a couple of number number 11s right at the bottom so a nice tapered rig so it'll get down fairly quick in the depth but it'll present a lovely natural hook bait to the fish main lines on all the rigs are 013 and the uh, the hook lengths are 095 fluorocarbon and this one's just got a size 18 colmic n957 hook on the bottom so again a decent strength hook one that i use a lot for for fishing for sort of quality silvers um but it's that, sort of like a stepped up b511 so it's a it's a perfect round bend hook for this kind of fishing the next rig that i've got set up 
is basically shotted like a punch rig. At the top end, it's very much the same as the previous in terms of the elastic, the short line and the back shot. But in this case, I've got a pencil float in a gram. This is just to bomb the bait straight to the bottom, basically fishing as quickly as we can. This is more for like a speed fishing type rig. So the, the float there is a one gram sensor so archer. Again, something that I use on a lot of sort of river fishing or where I'm fishing quick for silvers in deep water. I've got a bulk and then I've just got two number nine droppers there spaced really tight, about four inch apart to the same hook length as the previous rig. So this will get straight down and present the bait really quickly to the fish. Again, if there's a lot of, of roach and perch down there, this will be the one that I'll be catching them on. The next two rigs are bodied floats, which are more for basically holding the, the rig nicely against the shelf rather than bombing it straight down. Um, they both, they were Gloucesters. This one has got a number six elastic in the top, exactly the same back shotting and short lash. And this is in a gram and a quarter. The bottom end of this rig just goes down to a bulk, so with an Olivet. And then in this case, I've got three number 10 droppers spaced a bit more than obviously the, the two number nines on that uh, pencil rig. This is so I can, like I say, just lay the rig into the, the bank. I can hold the, the bulk and the Olivet pretty much right over where I'm fishing and have the droppers swing in against the shelf so I can lay as much line on the bottom as I want with this. Again, same hook length of a, a Colmic N957 2095 fluorocarbon. And then the, the stepped up version of that is just a gram and a half rig with a number eight elastic in the top end. Same sort of shotting pattern, but I've got a pair of number 10s and a, another pair of number 10s. Hook length on this is slightly heavier. This is just in case we, we're catching bigger perch and I've got a better chance of getting the barbel and the eyed out and chub with this rig. Um, and the hook length there is, oh, I think it's all 12 fluorocarbon to a Tubertini series two size 18. So that's basically my worm rig. Um, that's what I'll use, like I say, if I'm catching bigger perch and trying to target, say, the barbel and the, the chub and the bigger fish that are in the peg. So the other rigs are pretty much fishing maggot and caster. And this one's sort of my worm rig over that line. But like I say, we'll talk about how we're putting the rigs in when we start fishing. In terms of my shallow lines, I've kept it dead simple. And again, with the depth and the type of water this, that this is, with it being so clear, is you don't really, shallow rigs, you know, you're thinking sort of 12, maybe two foot deep. Whereas with this, I'm fishing basically a seven foot rig, um, a four by 12 Skiante, number five elastics in these, because if we're fishing higher up in the water, what I want to do is not have the roach and, and the fish that I'm catching shallow sort of flash in the water as much to spook the others. Again, you can pretty much see best part of four foot down in, into the lake today. Um, so that's why fishing really shallow just is, is out of the equation, to be honest, because the fish will be able to see the pole. So with both my shallow rigs, I've got number 10s spread really far apart down the line, all the way through the rig. And I've just got an 095 fluorocarbon hook length, but this time to a barbless uh, gamma black. So it's a nice, a nice hook length, nice, nice hook for catching roach tend to get slightly better hook penetration with barbless hooks fishing shallow and because it's so deep again the fish aren't going to come up when I hook them they'll go down so I'm not too worried about them dropping off and the only difference with the other rig as opposed to where that's a 412 at seven foot I've got a 410s set at four foot so dead simple stuff and that's that's basically it in terms of the rigs so in terms of what we're going to do feeding wise I know I'm rambling on a bit now, but it's, it's a case of, like I said, there's, there's a lot of different bits to this, um, this style of fishing. In terms of feeding on that ground bait line, what I've mixed up is some really heavy ground bait. So I've, I've overwetted this, I've had to come back to it three or four times to get it to the level that I want it. And this is um, Frenzied MC Black, Silver X Roach Black, and Census Magic Black. So the, the Magic Black takes on plenty of water. So that's, that's sort of the heavy elements of the, the mix. And the other two are obviously, you know, nice non-offensive mixes for perch, but ideal for catching roach. So with this, I'm going to actually feed it loose in that sort of depth of water. As I say, it's a full top four deep, but because of how, how steep the gradient is, putting a ball in risks, risks the, the bait just disappearing because the, the bottom sort of drops off 
quite significantly at points as it goes down. If you hit the edge of that with a ball, then basically you're going to be dragging the fish another foot or two foot down, down the shelf where you're not going to be able to present a rig. So with this, it's basically like an over-wetted inert mix that'll cup in loose. It'll make a bit of a cloud as it goes down, but it will settle on the bottom and just basically make a nice bed of bait. So through that, I'm going to put odd, odd bits of castor, a few grains of hemp, a few dead maggots and plenty of chopped worm. And that's going to be my ground bait line. So again, it's, it's fairly simple once you actually start putting it into practice, but there's a lot of considerations when we're fishing this type of venue. In terms of the shallow line, that's just going to be fed with loose fed maggots. Just going to blast it quite early. Keep that fed for a couple of hours and try and draw the fish into the peg. So in terms of how we're going to tackle it, that's basically it. Two lines, a ground bait line and a shallow line. So we'll turn around on the box now and get the peg fed and start fishing. Right, so I'm just going to put in the last ball of ground bait now. I say a ball, a little mound of ground bait that I'm putting in. So as you can see, I've put in the mix few chop worms, or quite a few chop worms, few casters, quite a bit of hemp seed, few dead maggots and a few micro pellets as well. Again, just giving myself a bit of variety in terms of what's going to be on the, the late bed. So as you can see, I'm just putting it in the, the pot and I'm just giving it a light bit of compression. So that'll just keep it fairly tight for the top, through the top couple of feet and then it should go straight down then. But like I say, because it's in loose, there's no chance of it rolling down the shelf, which is an issue I've had here before. So it's very similar to sort of how when you're, you're margin, margin fishing on commercials, that's kind of how you put your ground bait in. That's me line of thinking when it comes to, to this kind of lake bed. So when you're margin fishing for carp, you tend to be fishing on a shelf and this is how you tend to feed it. So despite it being a lot deeper, but there's no toe, there's no reason why it shouldn't work the same. I say because the ground bait's very heavily wetted up, I've, I've taken a lot of the activity out of the mix. So again, there shouldn't be any sort of floating bits of hemp seed coming up to the top. Right, so we've just put that last pot of bait in. I've also put one in with just a bit of loose castor and loose hemp. So I've got a column of bait going down. So I'm going to start on the, the strung rig. Again, this one's sat, set about six inch off bottom. So if there's anything that's just come into that cloud initially, then we should have a good chance of catching it. I'm also immediately going to start feeding me my shallow line as well. So I've just started with a single fluoro maggot. And we'll see if we get a bite on this. And the other tricky bit with this venue, because it's tree lined and you know with the sun and the light, it's trying to find a nice dark bit of water that you can fish in where you can see your float bristle. So that's an important consideration as well when you're plumbing up. It's all well and good finding somewhere that you can actually present a bait on where it's flat, but it's no good if you, can, if you can't see the float. So again, it might take half an hour or so for the fish to come into the peg where I've put the ground bait in. But like I say, with this rig, it just allows me to search through the water and see if there's anything that's, that's come into the initial cloud. As I say, with the depth as well, it takes a bit of time for that bait to get down, so... The fish could be at all levels until they've actually followed the cloud down and settled. It's quite a similar kind of principle to when you feed a fish and you put sloppy ground bait through the feeder to try and drag them down. That's, that's the idea which I'm looking for today is I do want a bit of a column of bait going down just to, to get the fish to, to home in and follow it down. So again, you can see how, how much easier it is for me to lay the rig back in and pull it into the shelf to my right hand side rather than if I was fishing in front of me where I'd have to flick the rig out and then drag it back in. I can much, I've got much more control fishing this way. So when I've plumbed up, I've started from basically the limit of my top kits, which I've got, and worked up the shelf till I found an area where it's, it's semi-flat. That was a bite there. And then all I've done is from that depth where it's effectively dead depth, 
is then I've just plumbed up the shelf to the right to try and get an idea of the gradient that I'm fishing on. And that's given me basically two markers to fish between. I know, say, the left-hand edge of my marker, that's where I can... That was another bite there. The left-hand edge of my marker, that's where I know that it's dead depth. And then to the right-hand edge, I know I'm about two, two or three inches over. But with this venue, like I say, because the bottom's so all over the place, and like I say, the pegs are on different angles as well, it's critical to spend plenty of time trying to figure out how you're going to fish it and whereabouts in the peg you're going to fish so you can lay your rigs in, see them, and also give you that option of fishing basically an inch over depth, two inch over depth, or fishing dead depth. Getting indications now, and what's noticeable already is that the indications I'm getting are much nearer the bottom. So that's telling me that the ground bait's actually started to get down there and settle. So again, with this ground bait line, I'm not going to lose feed over it if I don't have to. I'm hoping today we won't have to lose feed to draw fish in. Ideally, I want to draw them in with the ground bait and keep them pinned down. Also got a few pinkies on my side tray again, just in case the fishing's really hard and especially if there's more roach in the peg, I tend to, to do better fishing pinky on the hook. But I'm expecting this, this line to be mainly perch fishing. But what we'll do through the course of the day, we'll, we'll have to vary the feed up a little bit, depending what we're catching. As I say, if, it, if there's plenty of roach in the peg, then that's when I'll look to feed more hemp and caster through the ground bait. Whereas if there's lots of perch, then I'll look to the, the chopped worm quantity. So again, that bait's just sat off bottom there to the left hand mark. So I'm just going to move it to the right. So it's, it's much nearer the bottom now. So probably within two or three inches. There we go, there's a bite straight away. Say so this venue's not full of fish, but the stamp can be quite good. And it certainly is one of those sort of more tricky venues. I think this might be a perch. There we go, nice, nice dumpy perch. I'm expecting these to be the mainstay of the fish that we'll catch today. We stalled him up to camera. As you can see, lovely fish, really fat, good weight builders, probably about two or three ounce. So as you notice there, that's when I pulled the, the float up the shelf, so they might be, be sat close to the bottom. Like I said, there's a lot of little tips and tricks to think about when it comes to these sort of venues and these kind of pegs, but it's a very rewarding way of fishing because you really do have to think about how are you mixing your ground bait up, how are you presenting your rigs, how are you plumbing up, and where are you fishing your peg. Again, through different times of year, it'll change on here, so there will be times in winter where I'll have to go to a top five. It'll be the same kind of principle, but I'll just have to go further out into the lake to find that depth. So in winter, what I tend to do is set up a, top, a couple of top four rigs and also a couple of top fives. So now if it's the case, if I start getting bites, pretty much after the float's settled and it's reached full depth. That tells me there's no point in waiting for the, the float to go through the water and fish in a strung rig. So that's when I can go onto my bulk rigs and get the bait down to where the fish are. That tells me straight away that I've got my, rig, my, my mix right and my rigs right. So we missed a couple of bites as it was falling through and then as soon as we've gone actually onto the, the deck where we've put the ground bait in or much close to the bottom, that's where we've had a bite. So same again, try and where it's six inch off and then I'm just going to move it to the right where it's about two or three inch off. And it's worth noting where I've fed my ground bait, I've fed that effectively on the right hand marker where it is that sort of three, 
three, four inches shallower. Because in the same way as when you're fishing for sort of bream and skimmers and roach, sometimes they'll sit off the back of the feed. In this case, because the deep, the deeper waters to my left, I'm classing that as the back of the feed. So rather than fishing further out and fishing past, I'm actually going to fish to the left where there's less bait. So I know the bulk of my, my ground bait and my particles have actually gone in to the right hand side. And again, if there's any sort of disturbance where the fish are, are digging into the ground bait and kicking it up, if it does move down the shelf, it's only going to move to where I've plumbed at dead depth rather than where I'm fishing. Say if I, I fed where I've plumbed up at dead depth, if I fed there and the fish back off, then I've got nowhere to go because I don't have any more available depth on my rigs. So I'll just lift and drop the float a couple of times. Again, that can often entice perch into taking. And it's just a case of picking off the odd fish early and hopefully they'll start settling and start getting their heads down within half an hour or an hour or so. But again, this will give me time to feed that shallow line. So whenever I want to top up and re-feed this, this ground bait line, if it unsettles the fish, then again, I've got somewhere to go. So we'll keep plugging away now, but at least we've had a, a fish early. So we're off the mark. So like I say, we'll crack on and hopefully get into a run of fish very soon. Right, so there's a the second fish on now. Again, feels like a nice perch. And that one came as the rig was probably about a foot or so off bottom. And you can see they fight really hard in this deep water. That's another stamp perch. So we'll just get the hook out of him. And again, similar stamp to the first, probably about another two or three ounce. So you can see with these size of fish, it doesn't take long to build a, a nice little weight on, on somewhere like this. Anything around double figures is, is good fishing. So catching a nice stamp of those early with the odd roach possibly. But then even if we're lucky, we might catch an eider or something like that. You can get sort of into the 15 pound, even the 20 pound mark at times if they really line up. So that last one, I just moved the rig. Actually, I had it pretty much to the left hand marker this time, so it's probably taking about 12 to 18 inch off bottom. So again, they've not settled properly on the ground bait just yet. But like I said, that's why I'm not loose feeding on that line. So I don't want fish at all levels. Ideally, I want them somewhere on or near the bottom. All right, so there's another bite and another fish. Feels a lot smaller, this one, so it could be one of the little roach that are in here. That's a little perch. Same again, nicely hooked right in the top lip, which is what I'm expecting when we're fishing off the bottom like this. Again, the bites were getting a nice and positive, so looks like the perch are having a decent feed at the moment. Again, consider it's quite bright actually when you're not out, when you're not sat under the trees like this. We know, we all know how perch enjoy being in the shade. So it's an ideal peg for it. I see a shoal of bream there swimming past me, just past me uh, shallow line. So it's an amazing venue, this, because it's so clear. You can see the fish, especially the quality fish, right under the surface. 
But again, the problem with, with that is it makes them very wary and very hard to catch. There was another bite we just missed as it was falling through there. So again, I'm keeping an eye out on my shallow line. As the sun comes around a bit, I'll, I'll be able to see the fish there a little bit better to, to give us an idea if there's any any hide that are coming shallow or anything like that. There we go, that's another bite in the fish on. Again, another small perch. <laughs> I think looking at how many fish we, we've had so far in the space of sort of five minutes, I'm already thinking about changing to the, the pencil float rig to get the bait down and try and fish a bit quicker. And with perch fishing, quite often you sort of get spells where the, the perch are present and then they'll sort of disappear or back off a little bit. So when they're in the peg and feeding, Ideal, I don't want to, want to be waiting too long for the rig to settle. Again, it's that sort of compromise between the quality of presentation that I get on this rig and the efficiency of fishing a, a bulk rig that gets down nice and quick. And this is the reason larger why I set up so many rigs is it means that I've got the option, depending on how the fish are feeding, of trying to catch them quicker. And again, if they go a bit more skittish and a bit more wary when it comes to taking the bait, that's when I can switch back to a more delicate rig like this that'll present the bait a bit nicer to them. So again, with this rig, once it's settled, I'm not leaving it that long. It's not the, the rig for that, really. I want to try and keep a nice active bait and hopefully that'll entice the perch into taking. So again, when I'm putting the rig in first, I'm putting it to the, the left-hand marker where it's in the deeper water and then just lifting it up and moving it into the, the shallower water and just getting it to reset then. All the time I'm keeping that shallow line fed. So another important thing is where I've put my shallow line it's further out than what I'm fishing at the moment and, and away from where I'm going to be bringing the pole round as well. So again, with the water being so clear, what I don't want to be doing is hooking fish on this line and dragging the pole over the heads of the fish that are on the, the shallow line. There we go, that's another bite. That's a nice stamp roach. And the wonderful thing is about this place, because it doesn't see a lot of angling pressure, is the fish are in absolutely mink condition. So it's only a small roach, that couple of ounce, but again, they're all weight builders, so already we've probably got half a pound in the net or so. So I'll have one more go on this through the water rig. And if we get a bite fairly quickly after it's fully settled, then, like I say, we'll go on to that pencil rig. So there we go, that's another fish on the, the tapered rig. It's just dropped off that time. But again, that one come just as the bait had pretty much touched bottom. So straight away, I'm going to change what I'm doing and go onto that pencil rig. So 
So as I say, in terms of the actual hook and hook length and everything, it's, it's exactly the same as the previous rig. It's just the only change is how the bait's actually entering the peg now. So again, we're just going to stick with a, a single fluoro maggot. But I've always got the option to switch to castor or double pinky or whatever I want really. And then what I'll probably do after maybe sort of the first 45 minutes is I'll, I'll try on the worm rig as well and see if there's any better stamp fish down there. That's so a straight away there, we've had a bite on the pencil rig after it's fully settled, so again, hopefully that means that the fish are, are sort of hard on the bottom now. And again, as the fish start to work through all the particles that were in the, the initial um, bait that we put in, there we go, that's a fish on. Then that should increase the odds of them picking out our hook bait so the fishing, if anything, should get better. So at the moment, it's looking like the fishing's pretty good as it is. Oh, that one's just dropped off as well. And Maggot just doubled over the hook point there. I think with these perch as well, it's, it's obviously quite important to give it a good firm strike when you do get a bite to set the hook in that deep water. But that's exactly what we're after. As soon as that, that bait's gone in and hit bottom, we've, we've had a bite pretty much straight away. There was another bite there. So again, that's telling us that the fish are sat right over the ground bait. There we go, and that's the fish on. So that's telling me that this is the right rig to be on. Just netting, just over swinging size that one. So this is what we're saying about the efficiency of, of the rig. Because previously we were having to wait a lot longer for that rig to, to settle and then if we did miss a bite for it to reset. Whereas now because we're fishing such a positive rig, it's very similar to a bread punch rig that you'd use on the canal. It sets immediately so the, the bait's, or the hook bait's basically in the, the catching zone for, for much longer than it would be if we were waiting on a strung rig. So with this pencil rig, what I'm doing is basically bringing the bulk right under the float, which is bang in line with the dead depth marker. There's a bite straight away again. And then just dropping the float straight over the top of it. So it's settling as quickly as we can, as we can have it settling basically. That time I actually got a slight lift on the float before it went under, so the fish aren't sort of bang on the bottom just yet. But they're certainly within the bottom sort of three, four inches. There we go, that's another fish on now. This feels like a much bigger fish. Certainly fighting well. Yeah, and it's a better stamp perch.
again, not massive, but these are the weight builders that we're after. Again, hooked perfectly in the top lip, mint condition, the lovely colours on them with them being in such clear water. Stunning fish. So my next consideration is going to be how, how long I leave it before I top up. Again, because we're fishing in such deep water and feeding loose ground bait, I'm effectively going to wait until the bites start to tail off to any degree. And that's when I'll, I'll put on a, a worm on the, the worm rig, see if it's a bigger fish, and if I don't get a bite, that's when I'll switch, well, switch things up and do a top-up feed to try and bring the fish back into the peg. And the risk is when you've got a decent bed of bait there and the fish are, are already in the peg, putting a top-up feed in like this could draw them back up off the bottom, which is what I want to try and avoid. Again, getting a bite straight away. Right, so there's another fish on now. I think with the way that it's playing out, like we're getting a bite almost every chuck now. What we'll probably do is bat through these, hopefully try and get into a few better fish and like I say, when we make a change, we'll do a little update and basically explain what we've done and why we've done it. It's another nice stamp perch, that one just taken on a fluoro maggot tip with a fluoro pinky. Again, another couple of ounces in the net. So like I say, we'll crack on now, and let you know when we make a change. Mm -hmm. 